This is It Is Written. I'm John Bradshaw. Thanks for joining me for part two of our five-part series, Conspiracy More Than Just a Theory. Now, the problem with conspiracy theories is that they don't rest on proof. You don't need any proof at all to establish the veracity of a conspiracy theory. You just need doubt. Doubt and a healthy dose of mistrust, or maybe that's an unhealthy dose of mistrust. Add some secrecy, add the fact that at times the government has acted reprehensibly. Think, for example, of the ghastly Tuskegee medical experiments of last century. And you'll find people who are willing to believe that you cannot trust anyone, that the truth is being hidden, and that things are definitely not as they appear. The vast majority of books written about the murder of former President John F. Kennedy suggest that there was a conspiracy surrounding his death. You've heard Elvis Presley's death was faked, that Hitler survived World War II, that Denver International Airport, well, that's been linked to every conspiracy theory under the sun. Conspiracy theories about politicians are common, and you don't have to go very far at all to find people who'll tell you that the government is keeping what it knows about aliens at Area 51 a secret, or that the Earth is actually flat and the government is keeping that a secret too. No concrete proof for any of it, but questions, unanswered questions sometimes, and unsubstantiated claims made amid a ton of suspicion. What is undeniable is that the Bible speaks about a massive global conspiracy affecting the entire world, including you and me, right now. And there's no lack of evidence for this. The evidence is everywhere. The Bible speaks about it at great length. The fact that fewer and fewer people seem to be interested in a genuine global conspiracy is really rather incredible especially when you consider that people are willing to believe. Well, in 2016, about a month after the US presidential election, a man drove from his home in North Carolina to Washington, DC, armed with an assault rifle and a revolver, owing to something that's become known as Pizzagate. The word on the internet was that a pizzeria in Washington, DC, was the center of a ghastly child trafficking ring with connections to some of the country's most influential political figures. The man entered the pizza restaurant in broad daylight and fired several shots as he attempted to find the poor children and free them from the basement in which they were being held captive. But no, there weren't any children there being trafficked at all. The restaurant didn't even have a basement lives were terribly affected by this conspiracy. Imagine your business receiving 150 threatening phone calls a day and your staff members and your family members receiving death threats. The man was sentenced to four years in a federal prison for believing and then acting on deliberate misinformation. Now again, it's not that the government or any other organization has always acted entirely above board. But you've got to be willing to believe the very worst about people to go there in your thinking. A huge spiritual conspiracy involving the entire planet is being overlooked, while people discuss and believe that a pizza restaurant is ground zero for horrific crimes, with the participation of politicians. And there was never any evidence, never any reason to believe it was true has to take a pretty massive amount of distrust of the government to believe what we're going to look at now. Keep in mind, there's a global conspiracy being missed, and yet something like this is believed by intelligent people. Look up on any clear day, and depending on where you're located, you'll see vapor trails crisscrossing the sky. And you think to yourself, airplanes, because of course airplanes produce exhaust emissions. But there are people who are convinced that the trails left behind in the sky by planes are actually evidence that the government is involved in geoengineering. Geoengineering that not only affects the world's weather, but also poisons the environment. It's believed chemtrails, chemical trails, are a government-sponsored conspiracy. That chemicals such as aluminium and strontium are sprayed in the atmosphere and then they fall to the ground. Now, it's said this is ostensibly for the purpose of weather modification. 
but it's been blamed for bad weather, depletion of the ozone layer, pH changes in the soil, and on and on. Well, I've come here to talk with Terry Hess. Mr. Hess is a pilot, and he knows a thing or two about this subject. I'm a corporate pilot. I fly for corporations and private jets. Okay, around where? Which part of the United States? Mostly eastern half of the U.S. Okay, so you, you, you see a little bit. I do. You interact with pilots. I do. You're in and out of airports. I do. You understand the aviation industry. I believe so. Tell me, tell me how much you know about planes. That's a very open-ended question. What do you know about planes? It's all I've done since I was a freshman in high school. So I started pretty early and uh, I've been around. I did flight instruction, worked for the airlines, and then we've started our own private company offering uh, private jet service. Okay, now when you say you worked for the airlines, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. I was a uh, first officer, captain, and instructor pilot for uh, several airlines. Okay, so you've worked Most in the domestic. United States. You've, you, you've flown in other countries? I have. I did work uh, domestically as well as in India, a large part in India, as well as Solomon Islands, Western Pacific. Okay, so that's a variety of places in which you've worked. So, you're familiar with contrails, condensation trails, that, that, that path that planes leave in the sky. Can you Correct. explain to me what they are? It's just uh, when the atmosphere is right, meaning the moisture content of high altitudes combined with the colder temperatures, when the engine goes through the air, it heats that air up, and that's what produces a condensation and it leaves the trail behind. It's a naturally occurring event as a byproduct of the heat of the engine. Now, you don't have to go too terribly far to find people who will say that contrails condensation trails mm -hmm. are actually chemtrails, chemical trails. Mm -hmm. What have you heard about that? Well, it's just not true. I mean, what most people see in the sky is a contrail. Is it plausible to have a chemtrail or a, a government agency producing chemical uh, products and injecting them in the atmosphere? It's plausible. I've never seen it though. So it could happen. It could happen. All right, we're opening a can of worms here. <laughs> it could happen. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to this. There are 600,000 plus pilots, depending on how you count, mm -hmm. in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. About a quarter of a million of them fly commercially. Correct. You know these men and women. You interact with them. You train with them. You eat in the break room with them. Right. You sit on the shuttle with them. Pilots talk, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, they talk, share stories, mm -hmm. share experiences, mm -hmm. say what they know, mm -hmm. raise concerns, right. complain about the boss, mm -hmm. talk about the government. <laughs> right. From your point of view as a pilot, a businessman, mm -hmm. does it appear possible that there could be a conspiracy of this magnitude mm -hmm. without it being common knowledge among the, the, the pilots themselves? I don't believe so. I think uh, the pilots would see it if it was in action. But you're right. Uh, I've never seen it. It's definitely not part of the airline atmosphere. It's not part of the corporate atmosphere. And our skies are full of corporate and uh, airline aircraft. So somebody would, would likely witness such an event. Okay, so from your perspective on the inside, you're an industry insider, mm -hmm. what would it have to take mm -hmm. for something like this? Mm -hmm. The government involved in geoengineering in a way that it's poisoning people and ruining the environment and causing sickness and illness. What would it have to take for something like that to be carried out? It'd be a large scale effort involved, certainly an Air Force of substantial size, a lot of aircraft would have to be converted to uh, tankering the materials, injecting those materials at high altitudes. It is plausible to do so, um, but it would be a very large effort, especially in the sense to uh, change the weather and atmospheric conditions to produce rain, which is, I believe, the theory is that they produce chemtrails to produce rain. To alter Mother Nature in such a form, it would involve, in my opinion, a very large scale operation that'd be very detectable. Now what I've heard as well is that they, they, they seed the atmosphere with these chemicals in an effort to combat global warming because then it will bounce the sunlight off Correct. this chemical blanket and back up into the sky. Now you know enough about the environment, about the way nature works and air patterns work to have a, a thought on that. Does that seem likely to you? 
It seems very unlikely. It would be an unpractical, the scale to do so, to blanket the earth in a substantial manner to produce rain, in my opinion, would be very unpractical. Um, is it plausible? It could happen, but the scale to produce results would be huge. Uh, so I guess, in my opinion, very difficult to pull off. What interests me about the theory of bouncing the sunlight back up mm -hmm. towards the sun is that this would, it has said, create a blanket that would then trap heat down here. Mm. So it does seem, doesn't it, that this is a little outside the scope of likelihood. Yeah, it would be a big challenge. Um, I would actually be very interesting to see the attempts if it was ever attempted. Um, you got to go back to the what produces rain. Uh, what produces rain is the sun's uneven heating of the Earth's surface. And so actually diversity of the Earth's surface is what creates rain. You have uh, areas of, say, a freshly plowed field that's a dark soil. It attracts the light, attracts the heat. It'll produce a lot of heat. And then an area of water or an area of trees is cooler. And so that cycle of air is what produces the lifting action that will carry moisture up. It condensates and forms rain. So to do a chemtrail from 40,000 feet um, to produce a cloud that would cool the earth in one spot, leaving other spots hot, in my opinion, that would be a pretty substantial effort to make that happen. Okay, so let's say they're doing this. Let's just, let's just imagine that. Let's say the government's got some conspiracy underfoot and they're equipping planes and they're, they're seeding the atmosphere with thus and so, and I don't know where it's changing the weather, but evidently it is, and then it's poisoning us down here. Mm -hmm. So, pretending for a moment they are, where would they be doing it? You're the, you're the pilot. Mm -hmm. Where would they be conducting, where would they be outfitting the planes and recruiting the pilots from? Where could you imagine that happening? I would say it'd have to be, uh, it would have to be a government agency. I don't think it would be in the private sector. Okay, so there's, there'd have to be a government agency somewhere doing all of this that nobody knows anything about. Correct. Okay, so that'd be a big thing, wouldn't it? It would. And the pilots would have to be, I mean, look, I just don't know, and I don't suppose you do either. So the pilots would probably be just uh, pilots that are trained in that type of airplane. So the, the airplanes that do, say, air-to-air -air refueling, the military ones, KC-135s, these are large airliners that have been converted with tanks and such. And in my vision, if it was to be pulled off, they would use a similar architecture to um, use these tanker aircraft to inject uh, the material into the atmosphere. Okay, so we've assumed there's a way to get it done if, it was, if we really wanted to get it done. There'd have to be people in your industry blogging about this, right. writing about this, right. spilling the beans. Right. Wouldn't there, wouldn't there just have to be? I agree. It would be very difficult to pull that off without somebody noticing. Uh, the airline pilots are floating around that's the same, and the corporate aircraft are in the same airspace that this would be conducted. And if you're going to produce a cloud that's substantial enough to reflect the light of the sun, to produce a rain cloud, it'd be very large and it would be visible, certainly for other pilots to see. Do you see a day coming when the government of the United States is deliberately poisoning the environment, sickening us all, doing so right under our noses, not telling us, does that seem at all likely to you? I do not see a pilot that would engage in such a matter. I don't believe that, uh, I'm certainly hoping the government wouldn't do something like that. Uh, I don't believe it happens, no. Now again, what doesn't help is that governments have done things that they've kept secret. And then people find out and say, well, that just proves that anything is possible. But let's talk about what's really possible. In fact, what's actually going on now. And this conspiracy is big and it's real. I'll have more in a moment. Christians have looked for the signs of Jesus' return for thousands of years. But what does the Bible say we should be looking for? Find out by getting today's free offer, Seeing the Signs. To receive this free offer, call 800-253-3000.
or visit us online at iiwoffer.com. The signs of Jesus' soon return are all around us, and you don't want to miss them. Call 800-253-3000 or visit iiwoffer.com. Thanks for joining me on It Is Written. Conspiracies. Now, people have been talking about chemtrails for years. I asked a friend of mine about this long ago. He's an airline mechanic, works for one of the world's biggest airlines. When I asked him about chemtrails, he shook his head and told me that in his opinion, the whole idea was crazy. Yet people believe it to be true, certainly a minority of people. But you'll find perfectly intelligent, reasonable people who are willing to believe and willing to tell others that the government is poisoning citizens from sea to shining sea by raining heavy metals down on the planet from planes flying tens of thousands of feet above the earth. Now the fact is, there isn't any actual proof of this. No one has found the smoking gun. No government scientist has ever come forward and confessed his or her role in this. No one's ever seen a genuine photo of an aircraft being prepared for this. But in spite of that, people believe. So what about when you are confronted with irrefutable evidence that there's a conspiracy going on that's affecting the entire world? When the world was created, it was a perfect world. No death, no sadness, no sin. Now let's think about this. What is sin? Well, 1 John 3 verse 4 says that sin is the transgression of the law. Put another way, it's living outside the will of God. In another place, the Bible says that anything that is not of faith is sin. That's Romans 14, 23. And where did sin come from? Why are we here in this sinful world in the first place? Well, here's what we know from the Bible. Revelation 12 tells us that there was war in heaven between angels that were loyal to God and angels who chose to stand with Lucifer, who became Satan. Satan became divisive in heaven. But over what? Isaiah chapter 14 tells us, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. It was Satan's desire to sit in God's place. He wanted rulership. Simply put, he wanted worship. Ezekiel chapter 28 tells us a similar story, starting in verse 14. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. Lucifer was privileged. He occupied an exalted place among the angels of God. But he came to the place where he coveted worship, the worship that rightfully belongs only to God. You ask yourself why an angel of God in heaven would want to jeopardize all that he had. You can't really find answers for that. But isn't that what happens when a husband jeopardizes his marriage? or someone jeopardizes their future by anger or malice, or when someone embezzles money from their employer or does something equally mindless? How'd they ever expect to get away with that? You see, sin can't be explained. It's self-indulgence rather than surrender to God. We know that much. Satan was on a mission, a mission to undermine the authority and the government of God. And that helps explain much of what we see in the world today. When Satan came to the earth to tempt Adam and Eve, he knew he had to get them to manifest distrust in God. If they could exercise a lack of faith in God, they'd be lost. Satan knew that. And what was true then is true today. 
Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 59 verse 2 that sin separates a person from God. When Adam and Eve chose to rebel against God and eat the fruit He told them not to eat, that was sin. And what does sin bring with it? It brings death. Because separation from God ends in death. Life is found only in God. That's why the Bible says today, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 John 5 verse 12, Outside of God, there's no life. Connected to God through Christ, there is life. Paul wrote that the wages of sin is death in Romans 6.23. Sin brings death, and that's what Satan sowed when he came into the world. But what was God's response? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Jesus would die for our sins. The eternal Son of God would experience death so that we could experience everlasting life. Sin is so deadly, but God's love for you is so great that divinity was prepared to go to a cross so that you might live. There is a Savior today, and the enemy knows that. He wants you to forget that, wants you to be distracted, to forget God, to get too busy to pray. You know, in the parable of the sower, seed fell on four different types of ground. There was good ground. There was also seed that fell on the wayside, another kind of ground. But then there was seed that fell in shallow soil. Remember that there was seed that fell among thorns. What was that? Mark 4 verse 7, Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Jesus said later in the chapter that, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Satan has this figured out. He's been studying human nature for thousands of years, and he knows what works. And he knows what works for you. If he can distract you, discourage you, lure you into sin, away from the heart of God, away from the security that God provides, then he knows he's got you. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Thank you for remembering that It Is Written exists because of the kindness of people just like you. To support this international life-changing ministry, please call us now at 800-253-3000. You can send your tax-deductible gift to the address on your screen, or you can visit us online at itiswritten.com. Thank you for your prayers and for your financial support. Our number again is 800-253-3000, or you can visit us online at itiswritten.com. You can't live without it, but it can be a challenge to live with it. The Bible says a lot about it, and there are people everywhere who haven't handled it well. Most of us think that if we only had more money, our problems would be over. But in many cases, more money means your problems have only just begun. Your blessings can easily become a curse. Don't miss The Love of Money, featuring author, teacher, and financial expert, Julian Archer. The Love of Money, exploring issues of finance and faith in God. Finding the balance between relying on dollars and cents and relying on the God who provides blessing. You can have enough, and you don't have to lose focus on what's really important. Don't miss The Love of Money on It Is Written TV. Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. Consider this. Why do you think there's so much temptation today? Well, I'll tell you. It's because Satan is at the top of his game. Someone says, oh, this is modern thinking, enlightened thinking. But the devil knows what it is. It's sin and it's deadly. Someone says, do what you want to do. But Satan knows that's sin. The world says, you can have it. You can do it. Don't let anyone stop you. But the enemy of souls wraps sin up in the most attractive way. Alcohol is sophisticated somehow. Drugs are seen as cool. Rebellion is freedom of expression. 
Immorality is empowerment. The killing of infants is an individual's right to choose. You see what's going on? We've been reprogrammed without even realizing. The times are changing and our attitude towards God and faith and the Bible is changing too. Coincidence? No way. It's a massive global conspiracy. And if you're not vigilant, you're caught up in every last bit of it. So where's the way out? Well, God is the way out. Faith in Jesus is the way out. He still saves, still transforms, still restores. And He'll do that work in you if you'll allow Him to do so. It's not an overstatement to say that the world has turned its back on Jesus. But if you'll turn towards Him, He'll forgive you and save you and He'll keep you. That's what He does. Christians have looked for the signs of Jesus' return for thousands of years. But what does the Bible say we should be looking for? Find out by getting today's free offer, Seeing the Signs. To receive this free offer, call 800-253-3000 or visit us online at iiwoffer.com. The signs of Jesus' soon return are all around us and you don't want to miss them. Call 800-253-3000 or visit iiwoffer.com. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful today that while we are caught in the midst of a great spiritual battle, victory is assured through Jesus. He has won the victory. Friend, I wonder if you would claim that victory in your life now. Would you say, I believe Jesus is a great savior, that he is one for me. I accept him now as my own. Would you do that? If you will turn your heart towards Jesus, He'll take your heart and make it His, and you will forever be His own. Today, Father, we thank you for that assurance, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.